Dear all classmates, welcome back to Testing Without Full Model. In this video, we are going to introduce the exhaustive test for sequential circuit, which is the checking experiment. For combinational circuit with n inputs, we know that an exhaustive test applies all possible input vectors. For example, for two input AND gate, we can apply 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. The test length of exhaustive test is 2 to the power of 2, which is 4. If we want exhaustive transitions, we can apply super exhaustive test. For example, for a two input AND gate, we can apply a pair of vectors like 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 0, 1, 1. We can repeat this to all the initial patterns including 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. So the test length will be 2 to the power of 4, which is 16. In practice, super exhaustive test is too long, so it's not applied in production test. So, how can we apply exhaustive test for sequential circuits? We can apply checking experiment. A checking experiment is an input sequence that exhaustively verifies the state table of a finite state machine. The checking experiment is a high-level functional testing that does not need the implementation of the finite state machine. The idea of checking experiment has been developed by many researchers such as Moore and the Professor McCluskey. In this video, we are going to introduce a general procedure proposed by Haney in 1964. This procedure contains three components. The first component is a synchronizing sequence that brings the finite state machine to a known state. The second component is an A sequence which verifies the existence of all the states. And the third component is a B sequence which verifies all state transition. Please know that in a checking experiment, we only control primary input and we can only observe the primary output. The internal free flops cannot be controlled or observed. That means there is no scan DFT whatsoever. Before introduce the checking experiment, we need to understand the definition of synchronizing sequence, SS. A synchronizing sequence is an input sequence that fixes the final state of the finite state machine, regardless of the initial state or the output. For example, given this particular finite state machine, this column PS represents the present state. There are four states A, B, C, and D in this finite state machine. And this column shows the next state NS and the output Z given two input combinations which are X equal to 0 and X equal to 1. For example, if the present state is A, given the input x equals to 0, the next state will be B, and the output will be 0. On our right hand side, we show a synchronizing tree. The root of the tree contains all four states A, B, C, and D. If we apply input 0, the final state for A would be B and the final state 
of B would be A, and the final state of C and D are O, D. So in the next level, the state would be A, B, and D. Similarly, given input 1, the next state will become B, C, D, and then given the input 0, the next state will be A, D. Given input 1, the next state will be C, D. Eventually, given the input 0, the final state will be fixed to D, regardless of the initial state. Please note that not every finite state machine has a synchronizing sequence. And uh, the synchronizing sequence may not be unique. So how can we derive the synchronizing sequence? Starting from the root of this tree, we have all states A, B, C, and D in the root node. We put them all in one parenthesis. At each level downward, we apply one input combination for each branch. For example, when we apply input 0, the final states will be A, B, and D. If we apply 0 again, to A, B, and D, the final state are still the same. In this branch, we can stop going downward because it's exactly the same as its parent node. On our right hand side, we have a new set of next state which are B, C, D and along this branch we will get A, D and then C, D. Eventually we will have only one state in this node. In this way we can derive the synchronizing sequence. Please know that the tree size is growing exponentially. So this technique may not be scalable for a large tree. Now it's time for you to practice. For a new finite state machine, FSM number 2, please find the synchronizing sequence and uh, show that the final state after synchronizing sequence is state C. Please pause the video and the practice. Are you ready for the answers? Starting from the root node with A, B, C, and D in all one parenthesis. When we apply 0, the final state will be C, A, and B. So we put A, B, C in this parenthesis. We can do the same thing for input 1. We will skip that. And similarly, we apply 1, we will get final state A, B, and D. When we apply 0, the final state would be C and B. When we apply 1, the next state would be A, B. When we apply 0, the final state is fixed to C. So, answer is 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. And the final state is C. Have you got it correctly?
Now we need to introduce another sequence, the distinguishing sequence, DS. A distinguishing sequence is an input sequence such that the corresponding output is different for each initial state. For finite state machine number 2, for example, 101 is a distinguishing sequence. The table on the right shows the corresponding output and the state transition given the distinguishing sequence 101. When the initial state is A, when we apply 101, the output will be 101 and the state transition will be DBA. When the initial state is B and we apply 101, the output sequence would be 100. When the initial state is C, the output sequence would be 000. When the initial state is D, the output sequence would be 111. On this table, we can see that all the four output sequence are different. So we can distinguish them by looking at the output Z. This is the definition of a distinguishing sequence. Please know that not every finite state machine has distinguishing sequence. And a distinguishing sequence may not be unique. So how can we derive a distinguishing sequence? Initially, we put all the state in one parenthesis starting from the root node A, B, C, D. And we branch downward. For each branch, we apply one input combination. For example, when we apply input 0, to initial state A, the next state would be C and the output is 0. Similarly, for initial state B, the next state would be C and output is 0. When we apply 0 to state D, the next state would be B and the output is 0. We'll put B, C, C in one parenthesis because they produce the same output zero. If the initial state is C, the output will be one and the next state is A. We put it in another parenthesis because we can distinguish these two groups by looking at the output. Since we have 2C in the same parenthesis, we stop going downward because we can no longer distinguish these two states from each other. Similarly, for the right branch, we apply 1 to ABCD, we have two groups with output 0 the finite state is B with output 1 finite state can be A, C or D we can then move downward by one level when we apply 0 if the initial state is B the next day is C and output is 0. So we have this parenthesis with output sequence 0, 0 and the final state is C. If the initial state is A, we will get output 0 and the final state is C. 
So this state will become C and the output sequence will be 1, 0. Similarly, if the initial state is C, the output will be 1 and the final state is A. Because we can now distinguish 1, 0 from 1, 1. So we'll put this A in a separate parenthesis. Finally, if the final state is D, the output will be 0 and the next state will be B. So we now put B and the C in the same parenthesis because the output sequence are both 1, 0. We cannot distinguish them from each other. Finally, when we apply 1 to all the four states, we have four different output sequence. For initial state C, the output sequence will be 0, 0, 0, and the final state is B. For initial state B, if we apply 1, the final state will be 1, and the output sequence will be 1, 0, 1. For initial state C, when we apply 1, the output sequence would be 1, 0, 0, and the final state is B. Eventually, for initial state A, the final state would be D, and the output sequence would be 1, 1, 1. By looking at the output, we can now separate all the four states from each other. So this is a distinguishing sequence for this finite state machine. As we mentioned earlier, the distinguishing sequence is not unique. Now it's time for you to practice. Please show that 111 is also a distinguishing sequence for this finite state machine. Now please pause the video and finish this tree. Have you finished? From the initial state A, if we apply input 1, the final state is D and the output sequence would be 0, 1, 1. From initial state B, if we apply 1, the final state would be A and the output sequence would be 1, 0, 1. From initial state C, final state will be B, and the output sequence will be 1, 1, 0. Finally, from initial state D, output sequence will be 1, 1, 1, and the final state is C. We can distinguish these four states from each other, so 1, 1, 1 is also a distinguishing sequence for this finite state machine. With the concept of distinguishing sequence, we can now introduce the A sequence in the checking experiment. The goal of A sequence is to verify the existence of every state. And also we would like to verify the state before and after the distinguishing sequence. So how do we do this? We can apply two distinguishing sequence to each state continuously. For example, in this table, the first row shows the input sequence, the second row shows the state, and the last row shows the output. In this table, S indicates the initial state, Q indicates the final state, DS is the distinguishing sequence and the Z is the output. The subscript I 
indicate the time index. When we apply DS by observing the output Z, we can verify the initial state SI. By applying a second distinguishing sequence, by observing the output Z I plus 1, we can verify the initial state S I plus 1, which is the same as QI. By doing this, we can verify the state before and after DS. Given the finite state machine, we now start to derive our A sequence. Starting from the end of the synchronizing sequence, which is state C, we can apply DS to this finite state machine by observing the output 000, we can verify that this is state C. And we apply DS again by observing output 100, we can verify that the state is B. Now we have the final state the same as the initial state. But we cannot stop here because we are not sure what state is the final state here. So we need to move on to step 2. In step 2, we apply DS again. By observing the output 100, we can now verify that the final state is indeed state B. Now we verify state C and B. But we are not done yet. We still need to move on to state A and D. In step 3, since we are not finished yet, we need to apply a transfer sequence. In this case, we apply a 1 to move to a new state, which is A. Now we are back to step 1. We apply DS to verify this is state A. And we apply DS again to verify that this is indeed state A. And then we are finished with state A. We apply a transfer sequence, which is 1. And we move on to a new state D. And this time we apply DS again to verify that this is state D. And we apply DS again to verify this is state D. Since we have already applied DS, DS continuously to all the state, we can now finish the A sequence. And the final state is state D. Here is a review of the A sequence. We have applied two DS continuously to all the state. For state C, we have DS, DS continuously applied. The first DS verify the state C, and the second DS verify after DS, the final state is state B. Similarly, for state B, we have two DS continuously applied. So up to now, we verify that the final state is state B after DS. Similarly, for state A, we have DS, DS, continuously apply. 
Finally, for state D, we have DS, DS continuously applied. From this figure, we can see that if we stop here, we verified there are four states, but we don't know what state it is now. So we cannot stop here. We need one more DS to make sure that this is indeed state D. This is the reason why we require two DS continuously applied to all the state in the finite state machine. Now it's time for you to practice. Find the A sequence for the same finite state machine. But this time, please use distinguishing sequence 111. The table is given here. For each initial state, the corresponding output Z and the state transition are shown in this table. Please start from state C, which is the end of the synchronizing sequence. Please pause the video and work on this problem. Are you ready for the answer? Starting from state C, we apply DS. According to this table, the next day will be D. And we apply DS again. And the next day will be A. And the DS again, the next day will be B. And DS again. The next day will be C. At this point, we cannot stop because we are not sure what state it is now. So we will need one more DS so that we verify this is indeed state C. Up to this point, we have DS, DS continuously applied to all the state. So we now finish the A sequence. Have you got it correctly? After the A sequence, we now move on to the third component of the checking experiment, the B sequence. The goal of B sequence is to verify all the state transitions in the finite state machine. Using the same distinguishing sequence 101 and start from state D which is the end of A sequence. We now start to verify all the state transition in this table. From the initial state D if we apply a zero the next day would be B and the output would be zero. So we apply a zero to the finite state machine and we apply DS101. By observing the output 100, we verify that the final state is B. So we have verified this transition. The next state of D given input 0 is state B. The notation SX equal to Q means that the next state starting from S given input X is Q. Since we already know that after DS the final state is B, so we don't need to verify this state again. Starting from state B, we would like to verify 
this transition. Given input 0, the next state would be C and output is 0. By applying a DS, we verify MB0 is equal to C. Similarly, we can move this finite state machine to state C, which has been verified, and to state A. By applying a DS, we now verify the transition NC0 is equal to A. We can continue to verify that NA0 is equal to C, ND1 is equal to C, and NC1 is equal to B. So we now verify this cell and this cell and this cell. We now verify 6 out of 8 transitions in this state table. So how about the other two transitions? If you look at the other two transitions very carefully, actually they have already been verified in our A sequence. If you still remember, we have applied a transfer sequence starting from state B to state A. So this actually has been verified. MB1 is equal to A. And we have already verified N A1 equal to D. So this two cell has actually been verified in the A sequence. So there is no need to verify them again in the B sequence. The conclusion is that we have already verified all the A transitions in this finite state machine. So we are done with B sequence. In conclusion, this figure shows the whole checking experiment. The first component is the synchronizing sequence which bring the finite state machine to a known state. Starting from this known state, we apply the A sequence to verify the existence of all the states and we apply the B sequence to verify all the state transitions. Please know that this particular checking experiment is not unique. Other checking experiment sequence is okay as long as all the state and uh, all the state transition are correctly verified. Of course, a shorter sequence means lower test cost. Please know that the procedure we introduced in this video does not guarantee the shortest checking experiment. And this particular procedure requires distinguishing sequence. Okay, now it's time to work on the quiz. Continue from the previous quiz. Find the B sequence for the same finite state machine using the distinguishing sequence 111. Let's start from state D which is the end of the A sequence. Now please pause the video and work on this quiz. Okay, have you finished? Here are my answers. Please know that the answer is not unique. So you may have different answer, which is fine, as long as you verify all the A transitions. First, starting from state D, we verify D0B, which is this transition, and then we apply a DS, then we verify C0A, 
and uh, B0C followed by D1C at this time since D has been already verified so we make a transition to B so we verify B1A and we verify A0C A1D finally C1A in this way we verify all the A transition in this table have you got it correctly? In summary, we have introduced the checking experiment which exhaustively verified the finite state machine. It is a functional test that is independent of circuit implementation. We introduce a general procedure to find a checking experiment. It has three components, the synchronizing sequence fix the final state and the A sequence verify all the state the B sequence verify all the state transition there are three final remarks about checking experiment the checking experiment assume that there is no equivalent state in the final state machine the second assumption is that it's a strongly connected finite state machine that means we do not have disconnected components if we have this kind of finite state machine then we cannot verify the other disconnected component and the third assumption is that defect does not increase the state of the circuit Unfortunately, this may not be true for some sequence dependent defects such as stuck open. Now we have a simple proof for sort for you. Remember at the end of the A sequence, we have a DS applied to this state D. So how do we know that this one is indeed state D? Do we need to verify this state? You should be able to answer this question after watching this video. Thank you.